Hi everyone, welcome back to today's video on TJ Economics. Today we're going to be looking at protectionism and specifically some key diagrams that you need to know for your year 13 upper 6 macroeconomics. So we'll start with what is protectionism. So protectionism is by definition tariffs, quotas, subsidies, any other sort of regulation that is used to lower the level of imports into a country. It's quite simple. If we look at protectionism, the economic policy of restricting imports from other nations through tariffs, quotas, subsidies, regulation, in order to encourage domestic production. So there's two key ideas there. The key things we're trying to do are reduce the level of imports into the country and increase domestic production. And so as we're going through these diagrams, it's really important that you remember those two key ideas. The first one, we're trying to reduce imports. The second one, we're trying to increase domestic production. So let's have a look then at the different forms of protectionism. Our first one, import tariffs, any kind of tax imposed by the government on the import of a good or service from abroad. We're saying, yeah, sure, you can still import this good or service, but you just got to pay a tax on it. We've then got import quotas, which is a physical limit imposed by the government that specifies a specific amount of a good or service that can be imported from abroad. So it's an, a certain number of the good or service. We've then got domestic subsidies, payments made by the government to domestic firms in order to reduce their costs and increase their competitiveness. And then lastly, regulation. Any rules or permits or safety standards, any other kind of regulations that inhibit or otherwise hinder foreign companies from importing to our nation. So let's have a look at the first one, then import tariffs. And of course, on our diagram, we've got price and quantity. We've got our basic setup here. We've got domestic supply and domestic demand. You can see we've also got world supply there, that horizontal curve there. So what we're saying is that we can import from the world at any quantity along that price level. And so initially, we can only produce Q1 domestically. Below that quantity, there are very few firms that can actually compete. Above that quantity, no domestic firms can compete. And so initially, we import Q1, Q4, or we can just label it M1. So initially, we import M1 imports. We then can levy a tariff, and as we say, a tariff is basically a tax. It means that we increase the cost of the imported good or service, meaning that world supply curve is going to shift upwards, and you may be able to sort of see what's going to happen. That means that domestic production is going to rise from Q1 to Q2. Think about it. Now that the imported good or service is more expensive, it means that more domestic producers can compete. So that gap between Q1 and Q2 is the new domestic producers who can compete. It also means that overall, we're going to consume less. Q4 drops to Q3, which means that imports drop from M1 to M2. So overall, we are importing less and we are producing more domestically, as you can see. The key ideas here then, in blue, that little box there, as we're going to label that blue bit there, is tariff revenue. That's like tax revenue, it's tariff revenue. That is the money that the government is going to gain by levying this tariff in that blue box there. These red triangles are deadweight loss. You may remember that from externalities diagrams, from your year 12 micro diagrams on taxes and subsidies. Deadweight loss, inefficiency in the market caused by this intervention. And then in green, we've got the increase in producer surplus. At the end of the day, because consumers are now paying more, it means producers are now receiving more. Of course, these three boxes are all losses in consumer surplus. So the consumer loses out, but the government and domestic producers gain. So the consumers pay more, they lose out, but the government and domestic producers gain by having more tariff revenue or more producer surplus. Let's then have a look at the next form of intervention, which is quotas. Quota diagram. It's a bit tricky to get your head round, but once you get your head round it, it's actually quite simple. So again, we start with our initial level of imports. We start with M1. We're initially importing that much. And as we said, a quota is just a specific number of the good or service that we're allowed to import or export. It's a specific number. And so because of that, we can effectively just add it to the supply curve. What we can do is just have a domestic plus quota supply curve. And this is what I say to my students, effectively, once you do that quota, the S world curve is kind of redundant. Because look, the specific quota is the distance between those two curves. The distance there is our quota. And so we can work out the new level of imports and production there. What we're going to do again, 
domestic production is going to rise from Q1 to Q2, and total imports are going to fall to M2. The diagram looks very similar to the tariff diagram in terms of, you know, price rising, M1 falling to M2, but it's laid out slightly differently. We've got a supply curve shifting outwards, and so the labelling, fairly similar too. In the red, we've got deadweight loss. In blue, we've got windfall gain. I'll explain that in a second. And in green, again, we've got increasing producer surplus. So that windfall gain, think about it. We've said that a specific number of firms are still allowed to import to our country. And so those companies that are still allowed to import to our country are going to gain. They get a higher price now. You can see P1 rises to P2. And so those firms that are still allowed to export to our country gain with a greater price. That's why it's windfall gain. Those foreign firms who are still allowed get extra money. In red again, deadweight loss. And in green again, let's then have a look at the next form, which is domestic subsidies, a much simpler diagram. You're going to remember this, well, at least the basics of this from your year 12 micro. Again, we start with imports at M1. We just shift the supply curve out. That is our domestic subsidy. Again, the vertical distance is the value of the subsidy in terms of the price. And so we see, because we offer a subsidy to domestic firms, that effectively means that more domestic firms can compete with the foreign firms. Those firms that couldn't previously compete now can. And so domestic production increases from Q1 to Q2. And we import not M1 anymore, M2. You'll see this is slightly different from the tariff and quota diagrams. Overall consumption does not fall with a subsidy. That's the difference. Overall consumption here does not fall from Q3. You, you might remember in the tariff and quota diagram, overall consumption does fall. Here, it's not that overall consumption is falling, it's just that a greater proportion is being made by domestic firms. So be careful there. Again, the, di the, uh, the labelling of the areas, slightly different. We've got our green, which we might, might be able to guess what that is. We've got our red, red, dead weight loss, green, gain consumer surplus. But again, think about it. Because consumers aren't paying any more, the consumers don't lose out. And so there's less of an impact on the market. The only thing you've got to remember is that the red and the green, that box there, that rectangle, is the cost to the government, how much they actually spend on this subsidy. And so the subsidy diagram is a bit different from the tariff and quota diagram, looks a bit different, labelled a bit different, the areas are a bit different, but it's having the same effect. We're producing more domestically and we're importing less. So let's look at the last one then, regulation, rules, permits, that kind of stuff. You'll see, I'll skip through this quite quickly. We start with M1, we push S World up. Why is S World going up? Well, with regulation, with permits, with stuff like that, that's going to increase the cost to foreign firms from importing here, and therefore their price is going to go up. We produce more domestically, we import less. We've seen that before. You'll see it looks strikingly similar to a tariff diagram, and it is. It is effectively the same as a tariff diagram. The key difference here, though, whereas before the cost went up because it went to the government, here the cost goes up because of, you know, administration, permits, rules, etc. And so that whole area there is deadweight loss. The government don't gain revenue from this. And so there's no government revenue. There's no windfall gain. There's nothing like that. And so that trapezium there, that is all deadweight loss. The green gain domestic producer surplus. But be careful, it's strikingly similar to a tariff diagram, but depending on how you label the deadweight loss, that will decide whether it's a tariff diagram or a regulation diagram. So back to our four here, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little summary. This table here, feel free to pause, feel free to copy this down, print it off, whatever you wanna do. I've put together this little table with the four forms and the impact it has on different areas. So as you can see, tariffs, quotas, and regulation all cause a fall in consumer surplus, subsidies don't. Have a look though, all four of them increase producer surplus because again, domestic producers are getting more and they are producing more. And so they're gonna get an increase in producer surplus. In terms of the foreign producers, with the import tariffs, they get less revenue because they're exporting less. With the import quotas, some get an increase in windfall gain, but most get a fall in revenue. With domestic subsidies, they get a fall in revenue because they're exporting less. And with regulation, they get a fall in revenue because they're exporting less at a higher price. And so, in all cases, at the very least, most firms lose out, foreign firms. The government then, for import tariffs, the government gain revenue. For subsidies, they lose revenue. 
the, the quotas and regulation, no real impact on the government, maybe administration costs, you know, policing the quota, making sure that permits and the like are sorted. But yeah, just little admin costs. And then lastly, those bottom two rows, harking back to what we said right at the start of the video. Look, all four of these topics, all four of these ways of intervening cause domestic production to rise and total level of imports to fall, which at the end of the day is what we said is the aim of protectionism. So try and remember that. And like I say, feel free to print this off, copy this down, wherever you want to put it. So if you have found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. Feel free to follow my Instagram and Twitter. You can see my handles on screen now. There'll be plenty more economics on this channel coming soon. So please do come back at a later date if you've enjoyed.